Hi friends, John Willard here. I'd like to ask if you all would be so kind to remember to subscribe to our wonderful channel, CNA TV. The subscribe button is always down below. And stories from the heart is what works best for me. Family, friends, and compassion for all the world to see. A flower is what I desired for this wonderful day. But since it came from the heart, I got a whole bouquet. It's true. I prefer the kinder, gentler side. So in these Ozarks is where my heart and soul reside. You're watching From the Heart with John Willard. Hi friends, John Willard here, the gentleman poet, storyteller, and NACA contributor. Back for another show and more bone chilling truth. My opening thought? A good way to forget your troubles is to help others out of theirs. Friends, you've heard me say George Washington Carver said, Be tender with the young, compassionate with the aged, because in your life you will have been both of these. So I say to you, Enlarge my heart with a story and change me by the characters I meet there. As sunrise breaks into daylight, I smile. I'm glad to have had these moments. I'm thankful for the peace of this morning. Mm. Trips down memory lane where we've laid up a rich store of friends and times remembered. My hope is that by sharing with you, my fellow traveler, I will have enriched your journey. I'm glad to say that the pups and I were up at 4 a.m. this morning after food for the pups and oatmeal and coffee for me we took in the sights and the sounds of the Ozarks. Friends, before I tell you my story, let me say, the one absolutely unselfish friend that man can have in this selfish world, the one that never deserts him, is his dog. Friends, this may show you the importance of little things. A man having dinner said, Waiter, I can't eat this soup. Waiter said, Oh, sorry, sir. I'll call the manager. Diner said, Mr. Manager, I can't eat this soup. Manager Oh, I'll call the chef, the diner. Mr. Chef, I can't eat this soup. Chef, what's wrong with it? Diner, nothing. I haven't got a spoon. <laughs> oh, if you don't think little things make a big difference. Friends, growing up, on the farm. Our economic survival was built around 13 milk cows and a large garden. We sold the surplus milk and butter as well as many vegetables. I was milking cows by the time I was eight years old. And I can tell you from experience that cows don't give milk you have to fight for every drop. I can also tell you that the way you treat the cow 
has a direct bearing on the quantity and the quality of the milk she produces. If you beat her, treat her badly, as you are preparing to milk her, two things will happen. She will give less milk and the milk may not be usable because when she is angry and upset, the milk she produces is often bitter and useless. In addition, she might retaliate and kick you. <laughs> I'm encouraging you to speak kindly to her, stroke her a time or two, and let her know that you appreciate her efforts. My mother loved her cows and expected her children to love them too. As a result, we got maximum production from our cows, which gave us an extra bonus. After keeping one or two, three years, we raised her milk production so much that we could sell that cow for more money than my mother paid for her. For us, that was a big plus. Remember, little things. Is it the stories that make the mountain and the stones? Or is it the mountain that's made of stones? Which one should get our attention first? How often does one seek the big prize? Only to find that once won, it's not so big after all. Often that happens. And how often does one ignore the little pleasure or the little moment of truth only to find years later that it was not so small after all. That happens often. My friend's father used to play with us in his yard. His mother would come out and say, you're tearing up the grass. <laughs> His dad would reply, We're not raising grass, we're raising boys. <laughs> In the ever-present battle between the children and the grass should play give away to perfect grass or the reverse. And do we not all end up in the ground in the end? So why not kick up some dirt before we permanently dissolve? There is a matter that often doesn't matter. It's the little things that makes the big things. The smallest good deed is better than the grandest intention. General Risner was a prisoner of war in the North Vietnam for more than seven years in solitary confinement. For five of those years, he suffered from cold, heat, malnutrition, and lack of fresh air. He was deprived of any human comfort. He jogged in his cell by the hour and when he became so frustrated he had to scream, he stuffed his underwear into his mouth to muffle the scream. He would not give his captors the satisfaction of knowing his frustration. One day, in the depths of despair, he put his eye next to the cinder blocks hoping that there would be a crack in one of them. Fortunately, there was a minute opening and he saw a single leaf. 
Later he stated that seeing that evidence of life outside was a tremendously uplifting, life-changing event. Wow. When I heard his story, most of my complaints in life suddenly fell into context. And I resolved to be more appreciative of the many blessings that I had. A quiet glance around and it will reveal many blessings that you already received. Expressing appreciation for these blessings is a winning approach to life. Enjoy the little things, for one day you may look back and realize they were the big things. Let me share this poem, Little Things. My hands were busy through the day. I didn't have much time to play. The little games you asked me to, I didn't have much time for you. You'd ask me, please, to share your fun. I'd say, a little later, son. I'd tuck you in all safe at night and whisper, sleep well and turn out the light. Then tiptoe softly to the door. I wish I'd stayed a minute more. For life is short. The years rush past. A little boy grows up so fast. My hands once busy now are still. The days are long and hard to fill. I wish I could go back and do the little things you asked me to. Many things will catch your eye. But only a few will catch your heart. Pursue those. My final thought. We can learn these things from our dog. To listen without judgment. To love unconditionally. To guard faithfully the interest of those who care for you. And to be faithful unto death. You can reach me on Twitter at John Willard 47 And if you do me a favor, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And thanks again. This is John Willard from the farm.